We are not going back. There is no witch. Get out! Welcome back. Today I will recap a 2020 horror thriller film named His House. Before we start, it is a request to please like and comment on the video as it will help us to grow our reach. The movie begins in South Sudan which has been devastated by the war and people are fleeing from there. Bal and Raya with their daughter Nyga are braving stormy waters on an overcrowded motorboat, along with fellow refugees. But the boat crashes, and Nyagak and many others could not survive. We then see Ball and Ryle in an asylum, where an officer tells them that they are being released from detention today. They get overjoyed to know this, but the officer tells them that they are being released on bail as asylum seekers, and not citizens. Until then they will be subject to certain conditions, and if they fail to meet these, even just once, they will be returned to detention, and they will be sent back. He also tells them that they will be sent to a home of their choosing, and they must not move from this address. The next morning, a police van drops them in front of a house, where they meet their case officer Mark. Mark shows them their house and tells them some rules for living there, and they notice that it's a big house, but not clean. Now as Mark was about to leave, Ryle asks him if this entire house is just for them, to which he says yes. Later that night, Ball hears shouts and laughter from outside, but he ignores them. However, only then he hears a female voice humming. He begins going towards the side where the sound came from, but only then someone throws something at the window due to which he gets scared, and then the shouting and screaming grow louder. Now as the noises fade, he again hears a female humming, and he hears some rustling sounds from behind a wall. He goes there to check and gets spooked by a loud thud, and then he hears a garbled voice from a hole there. Ball bends down to check it and put his hand inside, and only then do we see her daughter's ghost behind him, and as he turns, a bird comes flies out of that hole. The next morning, when Ball comes out to throw the garbage, he sees an old lady watching him from her window. He waves at her, but she doesn't respond and he finds it a bit strange. He then goes for a haircut, where he learns that he is in London. Later that night, Ball was not able to sleep due to constant noises coming from outside, and only then he hears footsteps climbing. He comes downstairs to check and finds a bulb lighting there, so he tries to switch it off but it doesn't, and only then a wallpaper peels out from the wall on its own, behind which there is a hole in the wall. Now when he goes there to check it, we see the door behind him opening on its own, and as he pulls a wire there, the light there goes off, due to which it gets dark there. He continues pulling that wire, which then turns into a rope, and we see a ghost appearing behind him. Ball continues pulling until he finds her daughter's doll at the end, and someone pulls it back inside. He then again hears a female voice humming and gets shocked to see that the wall is normal now and there is no hole there. So he rips all the wallpaper off the wall. The next morning when Ryle comes downstairs, she hears a child's voice calling Mama. She then leaves the house to go to Church Street following the map that Mark gave them. But she goes astray and tries to seek help from three boys playing there. However, they begin messing with her and start confusing her by telling her the wrong way and telling her to go back to Africa. Later, when she returns home, she sits there in front of that wall and we hear a man's voice saying come. Suddenly the fruits she had brought fall down and one of them comes rolling towards her. However, before she could pick it up, the man again says come, and that fruit rolls into the wall, and she gets spooked to hear strange whispering from behind that wall. Later that evening while having dinner, Ball tells her that they will thrive, as he has seen jobs here, and they can start a family. Ryle says that her mother used to tell her story. In their village, there was once an honorable but poor man, who wanted a home of his own. He wanted it so badly that he began to steal from others, 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 others. One day, he stole from an old man who lived by the river, but he didn't know that this man was an Apeth, a night witch. The thief could not know that when he built his home, Apeth too would live there. So, before long, the walls would whisper the spells of the Apeth. The Apeth would not stop until he had consumed the man entirely. She tells him that an Apeth has arisen from the ocean that followed them here, and it spoke to her. Only then they hear some loud noise from inside, but Ball ignores it and asks her what did it say, to which she says they don't belong there. If they leave and repay their debt, it would guide them back to their daughter. Ball tries to explain to her that she is gone, but Real doesn't understand which makes Ball angry, and he says there is no witch. Ryle says she had assured herself it was a dream, but now she has looked into his eyes that he is a liar. Later that night, we see Ball scraping out the wallpaper from a wall, when the candle in the other room automatically gets extinguished. Soon after, he hears the door opening but thinks that it's Ryle, 
so he ignores it and continues his work. However, he then hears running footsteps and a female sigh, and then a female hums from the other room. As he walks towards the room, the hum grows louder and he sees a girl walking there. She stops and looks towards him, and only then do the dishes fall in the sink, and he hears running footsteps and gets spooked to see a child running there. He turns on his phone's flashlight and finds that girl sitting there, and when he goes to her, he gets spooked seeing that it's her daughter who attacks him with a knife and disappears from there. Suddenly she then jumps on him to attack him, due to which he gets terrified and then she goes back and stands in the corner. Ball picks up his phone and finds that she is not there anymore, but he hears running footsteps and her humming, so he runs out of the house. Now after a while when he comes back in, Ryle asks him if he saw it. Ball rushes to his room and tells her that they have to destroy everything they brought as it's cursed. He takes all the things outside and Real sees that he has burnt them all, and when he tries to burn her necklace too, she stops him. However, he breaks it and throws it in with other items. The next day, he tries to fix the electricity line in his house, but during this, he gets a cut on his hand and he starts bleeding. He finally manages to fix it, but finds Ryle whispering to someone, however, no one would have been sitting in front of her. Later, while having dinner, he tells her that it's not healthy for her to be alone all the time, so tomorrow they will find her something to do in the community. She asks him if he doesn't wonder what it tells her, which he says maybe she is mad, frightening herself with imaginary things in the dark. She asks him that after all they have endured, he thinks she can be afraid of ghosts. It says she can get her back and she should be afraid of him. Ball begins eating his dinner, however, after a while, he hears a man speaking in Dinka, and finds himself in the middle of the ocean. He then sees huge monsters coming towards him, and gets spooked to find himself in the middle of rotting dead bodies. All the dead bodies then start rising, but it turns out to be a nightmare. However, a ghost then appears in front of him, but as he switches on the light, it disappears. Only then he hears her daughter asking him for help, and finds wet footprints coming towards him. He switches off the light and gets spooked to see her ghost standing next to him, so he turns on the light and hears Nyagak's voice calling her mom, but suddenly a ghost appears in front of him, and as he turns, another ghost haunts him. Only then do the lights turn on and he finds Nyagak standing near the switch angrily staring at him. He turns off the light and many ghost appears there and grabs him. Nyagak then climbs on his shoulder and puts a knife on his neck, but before she could kill him, he manages to turn on the light, causing the ghost to disappear from there. After this, he sees Nyagak there who starts running inside the wall. He tries to catch her but fails, and says this is his house. He then picks up a hammer and starts breaking the wall telling her to get out. The next day, he goes to Mark and tells him that there is something wrong with the house. Mark asks him if he wants to live somewhere else, to which he says yes. Mark says they can look into that for him, but first, he has to tell him why. Ball says there are rats and bugs there and they are making them sick. Mark tells him this is going to raise a lot of questions as they are going to ask him why he is not adapting. Ball then begins laughing and breaks the glass in his hand, but when he realizes that he has done something wrong, he leaves there. Meanwhile, Ryle hears Nyagak calling her, and she sees her hand coming out of the wall and dropping her necklace there. She then sees many ghosts watching her through the holes in the wall. Later, when Ball returns home, the old lady asks him why doesn't he just leave. Ball says they live here now, to which she says they are going to kick them out anyway. Only then Mark comes there with an officer, and says he is telling him that rat this this. He tells him that he is gonna have to report it now, and the other officer begins clicking its photo. Ball tries to stop them and says let him fix it and that they are not going back. Mark says they will let him off with a warning this time, but only then Ryle asks him if has he told them about the witch. She then tells them that there is a great beast in this house that followed them here. Her husband has been chasing it all night with a hammer, but the witch is filling this house with ghosts. They then leave there, and Ryle says they like to see them crazy because they don't want to be reminded that it is them that are weak. He still begs them, and then he thanks them for the unseasoned scraps they throw them. She says let them send them back, but he says this is their home, to which she says she is leaving, with or without him. Later, we see him breaking all the locks of the windows and doors, and then he goes to that room and lights a candle there and says this time they talk to him. He then sits there with a hammer in his hands, and as the night falls, he sleeps there. Now when he wakes up, he sees a fire burning in the distance, and asks him where he is. A male voice says they to which Ball asks him to show himself. The creature says that his life is not his, but he stole it, so repay what he owes, and no matter where he go, he will follow, because he is his now. Ball asks him what does he want, to which he says his life for Nyagat. He gives him a knife and asks him to open his flesh, to which Ball says why doesn't he come for himself. He then puts his hand on fire and says he can't touch and hurt him, 
and that he is just a bag of tricks. The creature says why doesn't he sleep and then disappears, and Ball finds himself in the middle of the ocean. Nyagak then comes out of the water, and when Ball tries to look away, the creature makes him see her and an octopus comes out of her mouth. The next morning, Ryle finds him terrified and notices that he has peed on his pants. Seeing the opportunity, she fixes the broken lock to leave the house, but Ball comes there and tries to stop her. She stabs him with the screwdriver causing him to fall and locks him in a room. However, when she runs out of the window, she gets shocked to see that she is in her country. One of her friends then comes out of a room and they both get overjoyed to see each other. She brings her inside the room where other people of her community are also present and they are celebrating a local song. After a while, Ryle says she knows it's just a dream and she knows who he is. She then asks him where her daughter is. Ball then also comes there looking for Ryle, and we see her coming out of a closet as she was hiding there. Ball finds her and comes to her and tells her that they have to leave now. We then see how they struggle to leave South Sudan, and because they were not allowed to board the bus. He picks up Nayagak and boards the bus telling them that she is their daughter, and here we come to know that in reality, she was not their daughter. Apith tells her that she has no daughter, and now Ryle remembers that when their motorboat crashed in the ocean, Ball saved Ryle and let Nayagak drown. The creature then tells her that he can bring her back, and for that, she has to give him Ball's body, and he will give her what she wants. We then see her lying unconscious outside her house and Ball brings her back in. After some time, Riel is thinking about whether she should give Ball's flesh to Apeth, and only then she hears some sound and sees that Ball has cut his arm. She goes to him, and he tells her that this is what it wants and that it will come for him now. His blood drips on the floor, and he says that he should have tried harder to save her. He then says he is coming, so she must leave. After she leaves, the whole house begins shaking, and the floor cracks. Apeth then comes out and grabs his leg causing him to fall. It then comes out and bends over him and tells him that he is his. After that, he holds his hand and puts his fingers in that cut, which makes Ball scream in pain. Outside, Nayagak comes to Ryle and holds her hand, but Ryle lets go of her hand, and before Apeth could kill Ball, she comes there and slits his throat with a knife. Later, Mark with his colleagues come over to their house, and they start clicking photos of his house which he had repaired. Mark asks him if there's still a witch, to which he says Ryle killed it. He then asks him does he still see Nygak, to which he says your ghost follows you, and they live with you. It's when he let them in, he could start to face himself. They say this is their home and they're happy here. Now when the officers leave there, Ball and Ryle see Nygak standing there, and we see them surrounded by many spirits. Ryle holds his hand and the spirits disappear and the movie ends here. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.